After Christmas of 1814, the fighting between the British and the Americans draws to an uneasy stalemate. Feeling certain that war is not over, the British look for ways to protect their territory. They're particularly nervous about the strategically important stretch of water between Cornwall and Kingston, where the St. Lawrence River and British access to the rest of Upper Canada and the West is bordered by the United States. In 1826, the Board of Ordnance in London decides to solve this problem by building a military canal. They will create an alternate route from Montreal to Kingston, providing onward access to the Great Lakes. Starting from Montreal, the route begins by traveling up the Ottawa River to Wrightsville and what would become Bytown, now Ottawa. Then the route travels up the Rideau River to the west end of the very long stretch of water that is Rideau Lake. From there, boats, soldiers, and supplies would be able to descend through the series of lakes and rivers that form the Cataraqui watershed to Kingston. The British government chooses military engineer and graduate of the Royal Military Academy Lieutenant Colonel John By, to lead this gargantuan task. He is appointed Commanding Royal Engineer, Rideau Canal. From the start, he is confronted by numerous challenges, but one of the biggest turns out to be the task of cutting through the height of land separating the Rideau watershed from the Cataraqui watershed. The Isthmus, this height of land where the town of Newborough eventually grows up, is a massive ridge of bedrock. It is the southerly tip of the Canadian Shield. Two successive contractors attempt the job and fail. Ultimately, Colonel By brings in the military, the 7th Company of Royal Sappers and Miners and they hire Irish laborers to help. They build a community at the Isthmus, across the canal from today's village of Newborough. But the job proves to be much harder than they'd anticipated. They need to excavate a 2.4 kilometer long trench through bedrock that in some places is 20 feet deep. The rock, called migmatite, is an extraordinarily hard mix of igneous and metamorphic rock. The men have only black powder to carry out the blasting. And there are accidents. They also have problems with water seeping into the worksite and spend a lot of time and effort pumping it out. As well, the workers are susceptible to a northerly form of malaria that exists in the region at the time. While it affects work camps along the entire canal system, it is most extreme around the isthmus. During the summer sickly season, 70% of the population gets the fever and 4% die. Civilians, soldiers, their wives and children are equally likely to contract the disease. They also suffer from tuberculosis, dysentery, heat stroke, drownings, alcohol-related deaths, and a wide array of other ailments and accidents. It becomes harder to find laborers willing to work, especially during the summer months. Of the 160 sappers and miners that start out from England, five are killed in blasting accidents, one drowns, 16 die of disease, 
and 35 desert. 37 are discharged at the isthmus. Only 31 invalids and other company remnants return to England. With costs rising, both financial and in human terms, pressure is mounting. Colonel By needs a different solution. It comes in the form of an important engineering decision. The big breakthrough, both figuratively and literally, is also the underlying principle of the so-called slackwater canal design. Dams and locks are built where greater water depth is needed. Then the land in between is flooded, creating slackwater lakes that have the water depth to enable boat traffic to pass. A lock station is built at the opening into Mud Lake, now called Newboro Lake. Another dam and lock station are built partway down Rideau Lake at the Upper Narrows. They raise the water between these two locks in the newly created Upper Rideau Lake, flooding the excavation at the Isthmus. This extra water depth allows them to shorten the canal at the Isthmus to 800 meters and reduces the depth of the excavation needed while still giving them the five feet of draft required for the canal. The slackwater technique is not new, but it has not been employed on such a large scale in Europe or North America at the time this canal is built. Colonel By uses it to great effect, saving lives and limiting the number of devastating injuries. Today, the Rideau Canal is the best preserved slackwater canal in North America. In 2007, it is designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site, in part for this important feature.